So now that all these sword and shield alternate arts are basically breaking records for modern prices, the number one question that I constantly get asked is, when should we sell our sword and shield alternate arts? So today we're going to go through the top five most expensive sword and shield alternate arts for raw and graded. We're just going to check out the prices and just talk about it and figure out when the best time to sell is. But before we get started, we got to thank today's video sponsor, and that is Punch-Out Gaming. Punch-Out Gaming is my local game store and the number one game store in all of Minnesota. I've actually been to the mall. You can order right from their site too. They got stuff for everybody. Pokemon, sports cards, Yu-Gi-Oh, tons of video games and video game consoles. And they have one of the best selections of raw Pokemon cards that I have ever seen. Every time I stop in, I'm always leaving with a few raw cards and some sealed Pokemon products. And they just added a new addition where you can actually come in and play and hang out. It's honestly a great time. So if you're ever in Minnesota, they're located 30 minutes north of the Twin Cities in Forest Lake. Definitely check them out. The link is in the description. All right, let's get to it. Starting off with the Umbreon VMAX. All right, we're going to like check out the prices and then we're going to talk about it. So, I mean, the prices right now are just for raw right around $900 to $1,000, which is just wild for a raw modern card. It's absolutely crazy. Then we're going to hop over, check the PSA 10. These are the last sold on eBay, uh, 1475, 1476, 1640, 1500. So it is now a $1,500 card. So now the big question is, you know, that's what number one question that I've been getting asked is when do we sell? How high do you think these cards can go? And honestly with Umbreon, it's a little different story. I have no clue with Umbreon. This card is just crazy one of a kind card i do think it is going to go a little higher i really do i don't know how high because eventually it's going to hit you know the ceiling to where all right 95 percent of people cannot afford this card and then sales will start slowing down and then people will be like well i need to sell this card then they'll lower the price and lower the price but again i don't know if this card's ever really going to have like a big steady drop like a big crash because it is that popular and that many people do want it. But I mean, if you base it off of history, every single thing that gets hyped up eventually does crash a little bit. So I don't know though, this card is very, very special. And I mean, people are just trying to also jack the prices up and then the FOMO and everything and the hype, everybody's buying into it. I mean, what we should do is just nobody should buy it right now. That's what we should honestly do. Just stop buying it. And everybody will just start lowering the price, lowering the price, because that's all it is. Everybody's just buying into the hype and they're like, well, what if it goes to 2000? And then once it gets to 2000, like, what if it goes to 2500? So that's why I never try to buy into hype. I mean, I like this card a lot. I need it for my collection, but I mean, I'll wait, you know, I will wait a long time to see if this card drops. It's just so expensive. So yeah, I mean, if you absolutely need the money, you know, now would be a decent time. It looks like it's leveling out a little bit. I feel like it will probably level out at a thousand dollars for a while. I mean, like that's a really, really good price for this card raw. I mean, it's not a good deal or anything, but I feel like that's a solid price for it to sit at. And then, I mean, we already got a few sales with the PSA 10 over 1500. So I can honestly see it probably going to $2,000 for a PSA 10. And then realistically, it'll probably be like 1250 ish, maybe 1300 for raw. But I feel like it's going to level out at a thousand for a little bit, but I have no idea, you know, how many people are going to be paying a thousand dollars for a raw card, which I mean, you can still buy the ETB for a hundred bucks and pull it. I know the pull rates are very, very hard. Don't ever expect to pull, you know, the top card, especially for those sword and shield sets, pretty rough pull rates, but it's just wild. I mean, the price on these things, but all right, it's going to go hop to the Giratina. Now my favorite card in sword and shield, uh, the art is just beautiful. Now this is another card that I think, does have potential now you got to think lost origin just sold out so now for this card i really think this thing is going to catch up to moon Brian, and i feel like it's going to do it pretty quickly because as soon as the box price starts getting pretty expensive to where people you know aren't you know even tempted to open a box and people are going to start fomoing even more this card is going to keep going up and a lot of people like this card more than the moon Brian like art wise a lot i've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times so we're going to check the recent sales here because prices are all over the place with this card right now 360 448 500 450 445 500 
you know, I'm tempted to buy it at like 400 bucks if I can find a good deal of 350 ish, you know, but man, it is so expensive. So expensive. Got to check the graded. Now graded, let's see here. This is now a thousand dollar PSA 10 card. Wow. Thousand bucks. So really not that far behind the Moonbrion. And I really think it's going to catch up quick. Cause like I said, it just sold out. Lost Origin just sold out. The Evolving Skies has been out forever. Booster box is $700. Wait till Lost Origin booster boxes are, you know, three, four, five hundred $500. I really think the Giratina is a, is a definite hold right now. I mean, again, of course, if you need money, absolutely. Like if I had this card, this is a card I would never sell. I don't sell any of my cards unless they're from, you know, like my investment ones in the beginning of the month. You know, I don't sell my collection ever. I have a lot of vintage. I didn't sell one thing during the boom. I should have any like peer investor would, but I'm a fan first, collector second, investor third. Most of the money I make for my YouTube channel, I just buy Pokemon cards for my personal collection anyways to finish sets and all that. So yeah, I love this Giratina. So if I had it, I'd never sell it. But I mean, even if you were like, you know, not the biggest collector, whatever it is, which is totally fine. I think this card has a lot more room to grow. I really, really, really do. Cause it's, it's a beautiful card. All right, next, the Rayquaza VMAX. Now, I like this card. I don't love the beams. I feel like from a distance, it almost looks like like severe creases. But when, when it's up close, it looks super, super nice. I do like this. I actually like the V a little bit better. All right, let's check the prices here. This card is just going wild, too. Someone bought one for 660 I really think, too, a lot of this is market manipulation. You gotta think all these sword and shield cards just crashed pretty heavily in the last year, you know? So just think if someone's sitting on a ton of sword and shield alternate arts, like a ton, they could easily manipulate the market with this. Now I know a lot of it is just popularity and FOMO and hype. And these cards are beautiful. Some of the best cards we've ever gotten in Pokemon history. It's just when you can still open the boxes for relatively cheap, these cards shouldn't be that expensive, and I know they are hard to pull, but it uh, looks like average price, I would say, is about $450 to $500. All right, we're going to jump to the graded Rayquaza. Now, here's the thing. I mean, look at that. Only $150 difference. Absolutely wild. I mean, compared to the Giratina, which is the same price raw, around $500, and the Giratina is a $1,000 PSA 10, it seems like this card is almost a little undervalued in a PSA 10. Um... Now, I cannot afford this card right now. I'm on a strict budget. If you watch my monthly videos, you know, I, I only invest so much each month. And I, you know, actually show you guys what I'm investing in so we can all invest together and collect together. This is a little out of my price range. But I mean, if you're looking to make moves, this is a possibility. I could I could see this card easily get into $1,000 because it is a wild, wild west right now. I have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, this could be a $1,500 card. I have no idea. So it's... It's kind of just crazy how it's only a $150 difference between the two cards. Because, I mean, the most expensive is right around $700. So, I mean, that's a $200 difference, maybe $250 if you can get it for $450 raw. It's just, it's weird how people are paying the same price raw as a Giratina, but not in the PSA 10. Very strange. So, I feel like that one also has, you know, a little more room to grow. I do. I feel like it's in the PSA 10 at least for sure. I could easily see it being a thousand dollar card, but all right, next the Gengar V Max. All right, this card is just going wild here. Uh, let's see here. Near Mint 430. Someone bought one for 750 with the picture. Could be graded. Uh 425, 599, 376, 434. So, I mean, those prices are all over the place for near mint. Now let's check the graded. Now, look at the graded. I mean, the Gengar is a little cheaper raw than the Rayquaza and still more expensive in a PSA 10. I really feel like that Rayquaza in a PSA 10 is just a little undervalued compared to the rest of the cards. So, I mean, about 700 bucks, 700 to 750 in a PSA 10. Crazy. I mean, I could honestly see this thing get to $1,000. It's The market is crazy. Everybody's just completely FOMOing. And I get it. These cards are absolutely beautiful. It's just, wow. The prices are just so expensive. 
But yeah, it's going to get to a point to where not everybody can afford it. And the sales will start to slow down dramatically. It's just, it has not really reached that yet. There's a decent amount of sales. I mean, on the 9th, the 8th, the 6th, the 6th, the 5th, the 5th. And a lot of people are holding these cards and, you know, not sure when to sell. But yeah, that's the big question. It's just, this has never really happened before. I mean, yeah, it's really not happened like this before, besides like the boom when everything went crazy. But these prices are just kind of insane for modern cards. So I feel like the Gengar has a little more room to grow. I just don't know if many people are going to be paying over five, six hundred dollars for raw Pokemon cards. Could be wrong. Could be a thousand dollars for raw, like the Umbreon. You never know. The Umbreon could go to two thousand raw, and all these could go to a thousand dollars raw. It's possible. And that's another thing too. That's why I'm like so hesitant on recommend buying anything. Like even the Rayquaza, it's like, you never know. This could all just flatline and then start crashing. The next set after Twilight Masquerade, we're supposed to be getting like a dragon set, I think. Could be just crazy. You know, I, I don't know. You never know what's going to happen. So these are beautiful cards though. All right, next. And we're going to actually do top six because I wanted to throw the Blaziken in there. Uh, the Leafeon, which blows my mind am i the only one who doesn't love the leafy on art i mean it's cute i get it i just don't love it like the others i feel like the other ones are definitely a little a little better now i know people are gonna hate me for that remember just my opinion art you know it's just my opinion uh this card let's check the price is raw here uh 199 350 335 398 399 a couple lightly plays for the mid 200s uh, Red Room, about 350, I'd say for average. Now let's check the graded. What? How are the prices of these PSA 10 cards almost the same prices of the raw cards? That's kind of crazy. Am I on? Yeah, I'm on ended recently for eBay. Last sold May 4th. Let's check the uh, sold prices on eBay for just the raw. So 345 raw. What? Someone got 349 and best offer with both Leafeons. I am so confused. Uh 350, 305, 399, 350. That doesn't really happen too often for English. There's usually a pretty decent little premium for a PSA 10. This is very strange. But yeah, 360. On the 4th, and the last one before that was April 26th. Huh. Wow. So that's very, very strange. I guess we got to check to see what it's going for now. So let me take the uh, sold listings off here. And let's see what we can find it for, I guess. Or buy it now. Maybe, you know, people just aren't buying this card right now. It's definitely possible. Let's do lowest first. Bunch of stuff we don't want. So the cheapest one on eBay right now is $550. So, huh. So not many people are buying that Leafeon. That, I mean, that's just what that means. And I mean, I know eBay isn't everything, but I'm sure it gets sold a lot of card shows and everything like that. But it looks like Leafeon is not that popular right now. Very expensive. That's why, I mean, I just did like the top most expensive Sword and Shield alternate arts. So, wow. I mean, if you can find the Leafeon in the PSA 10 for $350 and the Raw 350, I'd buy the PSA 10, obviously. So, I mean, maybe you guys can still find a good deal for that since the last sold comps are, you know, 350. If someone has one at a card show, you can maybe like 400, you know, so not too bad. But, all right, let's check this Blaziken. The color on this card just pops every time I see it. It's just so beautiful. All right, let's see here. Near Mint, 301, 300. And you got to remember, too, not everybody's buying their super expensive cards on TCG players. Probably not the best for that. So always remember that when seeing these numbers. This is just a small fraction. But yeah, I mean, 300 bucks, three, 315 maybe. Let's check the graded. Uh, right there, not bad. So this card's a little more popular, as you can see, than the Leafeon. And it's growing. 550, 604, 470. Is this about the same price as the Rayquaza in a PSA 10? 640, 650. So pretty close. Pretty close. 
So yeah, I think a lot of these cards, I feel like people should be just holding on to these right now and just really, really watching the market if you're looking to sell. Because you got to think, once it levels out and starts to dip down, a lot of people are going to try to sell their cards. And they're just going to undercut people and undercut people and undercut people. And it just won't stop. It'll keep going. And it's it sounds crazy like it'll never happen. But, I mean, if you look at history, almost every single thing, like I said before, gets hyped up. And it just, it eventually falls. So, if I had all these cards, you know, in Gem Mint 10s and I'm looking to sell and make some money, I would just be watching the market like a hawk. You know, I'm going to try to go over these two on my market Mondays and, you know, if I see anything fall to put on Falling Friday, stuff like that. Because, I mean, you want to get the most out of your money. And there's so many other ways to sell it too. I mean, you can sell it in person or card shows or, you know, you can sell it on eBay yourself or, you know, consignment sites like the Arizona TCG, one of my sponsors. You know, it's almost the exact same amount as doing it yourself on eBay. But a lot more people see it because it's a bigger store. So there's a lot of different options too to sell it. It's just... With this wild ride and how Sword and Shield is going and the FOMO, I would probably just hang on a little bit longer. I mean, you'll see it. You'll see when, you know, cards start just dropping a little bit, a little bit, especially in the PSA 10s because raw prices are going to be a little bit all over the place because people are trying to get, you know, PSA 10 worthy copies and stuff like that. So you always got to think about that. And the more expensive it gets, the less sales there's going to be. It's just not as many people can afford it. So you always have to remember that. When it comes to these super super expensive cards but yeah it's honestly just so hard to judge you know and guess when you think these cards are going to actually level out uh, i really do think milestones like 500 dollars, 750 a thousand dollars actually do something to people's brains so i feel like once a card does reach a thousand dollars raw i mean a bunch of people are just going to automatically like no i'm not going to buy that you know it's a lot of money to a lot of people so i really do think these cards are going to stall out eventually it is impossible for them all to keep going. And then again, once they stall, people might panic a little bit, you know, undercut somebody, undercut somebody. It just, I've seen it so many times. Not to the extent like this, because these cards are literally just crazy right now. We're also going to check out the Evolving Skies booster box here. I mean, still leveled right around $700. It just won't go over. All $670 here, $700. I mean, that proves it right there. There is... You know, it will eventually level out. It has to. It just cannot go up forever. It's just when will it level out? And I do think all of these Sword and Shield cards right now have a little more room to grow. So yeah, those are my thoughts on all these Sword and Shield alternate art cards. I mean, I can't give anybody, you know, definitive answers or anything like that. I just think these cards are definitely going to gain a little bit more value. But then just like we've seen with the Evolving Skies booster box, they will eventually level out. And then I really think it's going to be a panic sale and everybody's going to just FOMO on selling their card and getting their payday. Because you got to think, some of these people paid a couple hundred bucks or a hundred dollars for their card. All of these cards were half the price they were now, like a year, year and a half ago. I mean, all the Sword and Shield cards literally cut in half. So many people lost money on Sword and Shield alternate arts and now they're gaining money. But yeah, let me know down below what you guys think. And let me know if anybody has every card on this list. I would love to know that. If you do, congratulations. We're all very, very jealous. So if you guys do like this content, please make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and please leave a like. I feel like leaving a like honestly helps the most. If you want to support more, you can now become a member for 99 cents a month. You can also check out my Instagram and my eBay. But otherwise, I want you guys to have a great day, and if you want to check out my last following Friday, click the link right here. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.